Hey all you addicts out there, welcome back to yet again another Addicted Fishing tutorial. My name is Jordan Kanigi with Addicted Fishing and if you guys are new to this channel, be sure to go down here and hit subscribe and hit that little bell notification. We come out with videos every single day on YouTube of all different walks of fishing, whether it's entertainment, inspiration, or educational like we have today. So stay tuned, we're gonna go over some really neat techniques on how to catch coho salmon today. We're talking about how to catch salmon using hoochie jigs. So if you guys wanna say more, stay tuned, it's coming at you right now. So what we're talking about today is hoochies. We use hoochies for all different kinds of salmon, whether it be Chinook, whether it be chum salmon, whether it be pink salmon, any kind of salmon that you're gonna find migrating into rivers in spring or fall, a hoochie jig works great. The beauty of a hoochie jig is it kind of represents a presentation of a fish's natural feeding habits in the ocean. They look just like a little squid of all different colors. Squid come in a variation of colors while they're in the ocean that can actually change colors given the time and place. So it kind of keys in on their natural feeding habit of what they eat before they migrate into the rivers. So it's a great presentation to use for any species of salmon. What I have here in front of us is a selection of our addicted setback hoochies. And these are something that we've come out with Mustad, Mustad Fishing, uh, that we designed with them. And it's a, it's a product where we've kind of gone through and manipulated and changed the design of these hoochies because normally throughout the years we always put these on a jig head. So it had that fixed hook about midway through the tentacles and you get a lot of missed strikes. What we've done here is we've designed a hoochie that has a further set back wire with the hook at the very end of these tails of the hoochies, which make for a lot more hookups and a lot less short strikes where you hook a fish, you get a barrel roll out of it and it comes right off. So it's been very effective in keeping a lot of these fish on and getting that hookup rate and landing rate a little closer to each other. So, they come in a variation of colors, whether it be pink, whether it be glow in the dark, whether it be these purples or blues, or these dark colors here, and they all work just as well as the other for finding these fish given the right conditions. So having each different color is gonna up your catch rate. Being able to key in on the water color or sky color or anything other than the factors that you guys have while you're out there on the river. And these hoochies come in a half ounce and a one ounce rating on these things. And that's gonna decipher using those depending on how deep of water you're gonna be fishing. If you're gonna be fishing a deep, slow, stagnant pool, you're gonna to wanna to go with the one ounce. If you're fishing a fast run or a tail out or something with not as much depth, you're gonna to wanna to go with the half ounce. What I would recommend using to fish these hoochies is some sort of twitching rod. What I have here is an Okuma Guide Select Pro 7.6 twitching rod. This is an eight to 15 pound test rod. The beauty of that 7.6 length is that it's very short, it's very snappy, and it's a very fast action rod. You want something that's fast action and short so that you can have more sensitivity to detect the bottom. And also, it helps you with your twitching presentation. The way we're always gonna fish these hoochies, unless we're trolling them on some kind of spinner, is that we're gonna be twitching them. So we're gonna be moving that jig through the water column, which we're gonna take you guys to the river here shortly and show you how. You're gonna be moving that jig up and down through the water column in that strike zone, and they have a very sporadic and a very wild action as these jigs go through. So we'll show you guys more as we kind of go along. But what I have here again is that fast action short rod. You can be any brand that you like, but I love these Okuma Guide Select Pros. It's the twitching model in, in specifics. What I have on here is a C40 Kaimar. This is a little bit bigger reel than you need for a rod this small, but this is kind of the run of the mill reel that I like to use on all my rods because I can switch them back and forth. And it's a good reel because it has a lot of line pickup and it has can actually carry more line if you're gonna be hooking some bigger fish. What I have for line on this reel is a 30 pound braided line. I like to go with that 30 pound when I'm doing any kind of twitching because it cuts through the water a little bit better. You don't get that line drag when you're trying to fish those deep spots with these hoochies where it keeps that hoochie out of the strike zone because of the current itself. So I go with a 30 pound braid and a high vis. I like to be able to see right where I'm fishing. But the most important part of this is that I add a 20 pound fluorocarbon bumper. The reason that we go with that 20 pound bumper is to create a little less visibility using that high vis line. It allows you to use that high vis line so that you can identify exactly where you're fishing, but also so not create that line shy factor when those fish start to be able to see that high vis line. We go with that four carbon, which is very invisible once it hits any kind of water color. So straight down to a fisherman's knot onto my setback hoochie. So this is my preferred setup. This is what I like to use. Again, fast action rod, something a little bit shorter, something that has a lot of sensitivity in the strength, not so much a real soft tip. So now that we've gone over the rod selection, the line selection, and the different colors of hoochies and sizes, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take you guys out on the river and show you a few different spots that you're gonna wanna fish these hoochies, and also show you a little bit of the methodology on how you wanna twitch these, because it's a little bit different than a normal twitching jig. So stay tuned, we're gonna hit the river and show you guys how it's done. 
So the beauty of fishing these twitching jigs or any kind of twitching method in general is you can fish it in all different spots on the river. My preferred place to fish any kind of hoochies is something that's a little bit slower. These have a very sporadic movement as they go through the water, which I'll show you guys here in just a second. And so you don't really want to fish a lot of very heavy and fast current because you won't get the same presentation. The hoochie doesn't fall fast enough through the water current like a twitching jig does so that you can get that presentation down in front of those fish. So the kind of spots we're going to look for is like what we have behind us. We have a nice fast moving run all the way down through and then it dumps off into, uh, into a nice deep buckety tail out. This buckety tail out water is the kind of stuff that I'm going to twitch. So I'm going to show you guys here really quick if we can see it outside the boat here, the way that these jigs fall and rise. You see how they shoot back and forth going different directions the whole time. That's the beauty of this twitching jig is the way it has such a sporadic movement in the water and it really kind of keys in on that fish's aggressive bite to where they're going to chase these down and it makes in my opinion one of the fiercest bites that you can get on a twitching jig because they are moving so fast so those fish charge grab that hoochie and when you lift up again you're right on that fish solid in ready to go so what we're going to do to fish this is the difference in between this and a twitching jig is you're going to let it fall a little bit farther you don't want to rise as much when you do these twitches as you would with a twitching jig because the diameter of this jig itself is smaller than a twitching jig. It doesn't have as much material to let it fall. So every time you lift, if you lift two feet and you have water currents that are pushing on your line, it's going to lift that jig five feet. So what you want with the hoochies is a lot smaller twitch. So I'm going to go ahead and cast out here. I'm going to let that sink down to where I think it's close to the bottom. And when I do my twitches, I'm going to do a lot shorter little more sporadic twitches not so much the really fast whippy twitches that we would do with a half ounce or a three quarter ounce twitching jig so with these i'm going to do a lot shorter jigs only about two to three feet going from my belly button up to about my nose reeling it every so often that i need to if i'm in a deep hole i don't even hardly have to reel sometimes so like in this hole i'm going to do a nice short twitch bring it all the way back to the boat and then start over again Let it fall, short little sweet twitches. And again, you don't want to bring that jig too far up out of the water column. You want to keep it deep, you want to keep it down in front of those fish and do a nice short choppy jig each time hearing that water snap off your line until that's down there all the way in front of those fish jumping up and down sporadically like we love. So another key component to fishing the hoochie setback jig is letting it fall a little bit farther than you commonly would with any kind of a twitching jig. I've mentioned the rise before, the jig needs to be a little bit shorter, but when you let that hoochie fall, that's where the best action comes off of these hoochies is as it's falling, it shoots in different directions and it swims its way back down to the bottom and that's when those fish are gonna take it, is almost religiously on that fall. So you'll see here as I come back across, I'm gonna be jigging and letting it fall much further than I am making it rise. So as it falls, I'm gonna jig, let it fall. One, two, three, jig, one, two, three. And it's gonna depend on what kind of water that you're fishing for this. Again, I choose a little bit deeper water to fish these hoochies in, because it gives that, that hoochie a lot more room to swim around and do all that sporadic movement that we want coming off of that jig. So again, nice and short, letting it fall a little bit further than normal. Nice and short, letting it fall a little bit further than normal. Again, a nice snappy, real short jig as you come back up. And that is gonna get those fish all riled up. We get a lot of comments all the time on you guys wish we would catch some fish while we're doing these tutorials. The way we do these tutorials, we come out after work or before work or in a, in a day off that we have, we come out and fish hard. But the goal of these videos is to teach you guys in depth how to do the mechanics and how to actually use these products and these sort of styles of fishing effectively. If you guys want to see more and you want to see us actually catching fish, be sure to go on to the YouTube channel and Sean will show you right now a couple of clips of us actually catching fish on these hoochies. All right, everybody, so that pretty much wraps up the setup and the methods of how to use these hoochie jigs. If you guys have never used a hoochie jig before, be sure to go out and go to your local tackle shop or on mustad.com and try to find some of these setback hoochies. They work really, really well on any species of salmon and they're a great method to have in your box. If you guys like what you saw here today, be sure to go down here and comment below. Give this video a little thumbs up. It really helps spread the word. And do not forget to share it out there so that everybody can learn how to use these jigs and catch more fish out there on the river. Again, thank you so much for tuning in today, you guys. You guys stay fishy. We'll see you out there on the river.